Kira Phillips asks, is homosexuality a problem in need of a cure? And she's getting criticized for it. You know what? I think she's getting unfairly criticized. She used this. I'll pl let me play it for you first. She uses the question to premise a segment in which she very clearly says that that's a ridiculous way of thinking, or at least that's the way I hear it. I think she's getting unfairly criticized. Take a listen. Homosexuality. Is it a problem in need of a cure? grabs your attention, doesn't it? And as you probably know, California is one of the most liberal states in the country. But wait until you hear about this law. Since 1950, health experts have been required to seek a cure to homosexuality. Lawmakers are in the... Pro okay, we introduce stuff the same way here, e even more controversially. When I talk to Shirley Phelps Roper from the Westboro Baptist Church, I ask, what's a bigger problem? Gazer, gazer Jews. And it's it's obvious satire on my end. It's obvious. I'm just I'm I'm just going back at her. This isn't even that. I think Kira Phillips is really being unfairly criticized. The, the segment did not in any way think suggest that it is the case that homosexuality is a problem needing a cure. She very clearly challenges the valid validity of the entire thing. I don't see the big deal. Well, you know, it's easy. If you're just cherry picking, you know, audio clips, it's very easy to to make anyone seem like they, they could be on either side of an argument. The, the only legitimate concern was there wasn't actually a homosexual voice in the entire segment, which I can buy into as being a little silly. If you're discussing that, you should have that voice. But that's completely separate from is Kira Phillips doing something wrong by framing the argument. We do the same thing and, right. and we break it down and, and I don't we've never received emails for those framings. Um, let's go to politics and intelligence. Satoshi Kanazawa is an evolutionary psychologist. His latest study is offending many people, something he's done before. Take a listen to what he's saying. My study shows that uh, liberals are more intelligent than conservatives, mm -hmm. just like atheists more intelligent than the religious, because more intelligent people tend to adopt evolutionarily novel values that our ancestors didn't have. Mm -hmm. My claim is that it is more natural for humans to be conservative, it is more natural for humans to believe in God, and therefore more intelligent people go against the violatory design uh. and become liberals. Or okay, so he is saying essentially people who consider themselves liberals or atheists have higher IQs than those who are more religious or conservative. He says the underlying reasons are evolution, something which many people don't agree with. Uh, incredible to me, but they don't. And he contends that um, he contends a number of things. He says religion stems from the tendency to want to make sense of natural phenomenon. He also says intelligent individuals are more likely to recognize and comprehend evolutionary novel entities and situations. Some of these novel entities and situations form the basis of values preferences and lifestyles. Here's the bottom line. He says those who identified as very liberal had an average IQ of 106 during adolescence compared to those who consider themselves very conservative, an IQ of only 95 below the average of 100. You might suspect Kanazawa is a liberal. He's not. He's a libertarian who admits to despising liberals. And he actually doesn't believe smarter people are more likely to be liberal because those views are correct. He is a more conservative guy, yet he is making this claim. Pretty interesting, is it not? Fascinating. Uh, very strange. Well, I know that there are a lot of people going against what he is saying and saying he is just a partisan guy, but I think it's pretty clear that, he, that at least he is not, whether or not you believe that. Um, please visit our website, midweekpolitics.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Make sure you're getting the new podcast top left corner of the screen. This is Midweek Politics with Dave Pakman. Midweek Politics is brought to you in part by Jackson and Connor, classically modern men's apparel in Northampton, Massachusetts, on the second floor of Thorne's Marketplace, and by DIF Design, specializing in custom business websites at difdesign.com. To find out more about underwriting Midweek Politics, visit midweekpolitics.com.